Hello, my name is Jian Song, a member of the KGSE Math Circle. My presentation is about arithmetic, geometric, and arithmetical geometric sequences, and please note in advance that it will not include information on series. So first, let's define a sequence. From these examples on the screen, you can notice a pattern. The first one increases by two every term, the second one increases by a factor of two every term, and the third one has a pattern for the denominator, the denominator and the numerator. As such, a sequence is an arrangement of numbers that are in a distinct or recognizable pattern, and each number in a sequence is called a term. There are two main types of sequences, and let's try to define one called arithmetic sequence. From this table showing the perimeters of equilateral triangles with the following side lengths, predict the perimeter when the side length is 12. Then think why you came to that answer and what relationship exists between the side length and perimeter. So you can easily notice that the perimeter increases by three every time the side length increases by one centimeter. Using this pattern, you can predict the perimeter to be 36 centimeters when the side length is 12 centimeters. And you got this answer because the relationship between the perimeter and the side length is that p equals 3n as shown in the figure. The perimeter is 3 times the side length. So this is an arithmetic sequence, a sequence with a common difference between each consecutive pair of terms. This is similar to the linear functions that have the y equals mx plus b, as there is a constant slope or a common difference in the sequence. The explicit formula for the sequence is a n equals a1 plus d times n minus 1, where a n a1 is the first term and d is the common difference. So to visualize this, you can look at the sequence here, 2, 5, 8, 11, 14, and so on. The common difference here is 3. So 5 comes from adding 3 once to 2, 8 comes from adding 3 twice to 2, and so on. This formula is applicable even when the common difference is negative. So a property of arithmetic sequence is that an is the mean or the average of the term before and after the term an. This is because the sum of the terms before and after an cancels out the common difference and leaves out 2 times an. Now let's try to define a, another common sequence called the geometric sequence. So this table shows a number of cells in a culture that divide every hour. How many cells will be there in eight hours and why? What is the relationship between the number of hours and the number of cells? Again, the pattern is quite clear. The number of cells doubles every hour from 8,000 to 2,000 to 4,000 and so on. So using this pattern, you can easily predict the number of cells after 8 hours to be 128,000 cells. To show this relationship, you can use the equation c equals 500 times 2 to the power of t, considering how there were originally 500 cells or uh, 10,000 cells to times 2 to the power of t minus 1 to see the hourly effect from hour 1. This is, an geom this is a geometric sequence, a sequence with a common ratio between each pair of consecutive terms. This will create the effect of a constant multiplier. The explicit formula for the sequence is a n equals a1 times 2 r to the power of n minus 1, where a1 is the first term and r is the common ratio. In the geometric sequence 2, 4, 8, 16, the common ratio can be seen from how 4 is 2 times 2 to the power of 1, the next term 8 is 2 times 2 to the power of 2, and so on. So how do we find specific terms of a sequence and their formulas? There are two ways, the explicit and recursive formulas. The explicit formulas are what I showed before. It is a method of finding the value of a term in a sequence using its position. It computes the value of an using its location. On the other hand, the recursive formula is a method of finding the value of a term in a sequence using the value of its previous term. So it requires the computation of all previous terms in order to find the value of an. As you can see, the recursive formulas always include the previous term and either add the common difference for the arithmetic sequence or multiply the common ratio for the geometric sequence. Here is a practice for finding explicit and recursive formulas. I'll stop for five seconds for a quick overview. And here are the answers. 
In the first sequence, the first term is 2 and the common difference is also 2. So the explicit formula could be found by saying 2 plus 2 times n minus 1, which equals 2n. And the recursive formula is the previous term plus 2. In the geometric sequence of 1 minus 1, 1 minus 1, and so on, the first term is 1 and the common ratio is minus 1. The explicit formula is thus 1 minus 1 to the power of n minus 1, and the recursive formula is just minus 1 times the previous term. Now let me introduce the arithmetical geometric sequence, a sequence of terms formed by multiplying the corresponding terms of arithmetic and geometric sequences. So if a1, a2, a3, all the way through an is an arithmetic sequence, and b1, b2, b3, all the way through bn is a geometric sequence, then the sequence made up of the products of each term, so a1 times b1, a2 times b2, a3 times b3, all the way through an times bn, is an arithmetical geometry sequence. The general form of an arithmetical geometry sequence is a, a plus d times r, a plus 2d times r squared, etc., which will lead to the explicit formula here, which is basically the product of the arithmetic sequence and geometric sequence explicit formulas. And here is an example of an arithmetic geometric sequence, and it's breakdown down into the product of arithmetic and geometric sequences. Such sequences are applied in the computation of expected values and probability theory, but we will skip this part because it requires knowledge in series, which is not covered in this presentation. Now let's solve some practice questions. The first question asks, how many terms are there in the following sequence? And to solve this, you should determine the type of sequence first. And by looking at how the denominator doubles from 2, 4, 8, etc., the sequence is geometric. The common ratio is 1 over 2. So the explicit formula using the first term, 1 over 2, is 1 over 2 times 1 over 2 to the power of n minus 1, which can be simplified to 1 over 2 to the power of n. By substituting the last term, 1 over 1024, into the formula output, you can find n to be 10, since the denominator 1024 is 2 to the power of 10. This indicates that there are 10 terms in the sequence. And the next question asks, uh, after dropping a ball from the height of 1 meter, the ball bounces each time to 75% of its previous height. What maximum height will the ball reach after its eighth bounce? So after one bounce, you can realize that the ball reaches 0.75 meters. This is our first term, t1, when n is the number of bounces. Since the common ratio is also 0.75, the explicit formula of this geometric sequence is 0.75 times 0.75 to the power of n minus 1. So when n equals 8, which means after the eighth bounce, the ball reaches the maximum height of around 0.1 meter. The last question is from AMC 10. The real numbers C, B, A form an arithmetic sequence with A being greater or equal to B, B being greater or equal to C, and C being greater or equal to zero. The quadratic uh, equation AX squared plus BX plus C has exactly one root, and what is this root? Since the equation has only one root, we can use the discriminant to say that B squared equals 4AC. And since A, B, C form an arithmetic sequence, the common difference can be found by b minus a and c minus b being the same. As b is the middle term, it is also the mean of a and c, and using the quadratic formula to solve the equation, you can note that b squared minus 4ac equals 0. Then we're left with minus b over 2a, and to find minus b over 2a, we have to use the discriminant to get uh, minus b over 2a to equal minus 2c over b and then substitute b with a plus c over 2. And now you only have to find a over c by substituting b from the discriminant with b equaling a plus c over 2. Now you can divide all sides by uh, c squared. And using the quadratic formula, you can find a over c to equal 7 plus 4 root 3. Plugging that back into the equation gives our answer, which is minus 2c over b equaling minus 2 plus root 3.
So this ends my presentation on arithmetic geometry and arithmetical geometry sequences. Now you can know how to identify the type of sequence, find the particular terms using different formulas, and apply sequences to solve real life problems. And it will be helpful for you to learn how uh, learn more about arithmetic geometry and arithmetical geometric series for further application in other areas and situations. Thank you for listening. Thank you.